Hello and welcome to a new sketchbook time video. I haven't done one of these on YouTube for a while so I thought it was about time we did a little bit of sketching together. So if you'd like to draw what I'm drawing I've actually put the reference image in the description beneath the video. If you just want to work on your own projects and have me as your drawing companion in the background, then that's great too. <laughs> the important thing is, is that we just get out our sketchbooks and have some fun filling a page or two. So what I'm going to be doing in this one is I'm just going to be drawing some very simple little mushrooms. I wanted to do like a warm up drawing because I'm going to be painting some mushrooms for an art prompt that I'll be working on. This month I'm hosting the Woodland March Art Challenge on my Patreon where some of my patrons and I are working on 15 different prompts all with a woodland theme and I want to do a painting of mushrooms and toadstools. That's the fourth prompt in the challenge but I thought before I do that it might be quite fun just to draw some and just do a little warm up. This is a very simple sketch and so I think even if you're pretty much a beginner you could attempt this one. So you'll see that I start by laying down some pen to begin with which I'm then going to work on top of. So I'm using the Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Brush Pens. I love these for working in mixed media because they're great for layering on top of they're actually also a light fast pen, which um, obviously it doesn't really matter if you're working in a sketchbook, but if you want to work on pieces that you want to later sell, then it's a good idea. I just like to have light fast pens generally anyway, because then I'm not worrying about the fact that they may fade. <laughs> so I use those to just get the basic shape of the mushroom. And then I start layering on top with colored pencil. For those of you who are working from the image that I'm working from, the one I've linked to in the description, you'll notice that I'm not copying it exactly. And this is often what I'll do when I'm working from a reference image. I kind of use it as a starting point. So I've set out my little mushrooms slightly differently than the ones on the photo. I just wanted to look at them for the shape and the colour and just see how I could recreate them in my own style and in my own way. This is just something that I wanted to do for fun, really. The mushrooms I'm actually going to be painting for the prompt are probably going to be quite different to this. In fact, I'm thinking of making a painting with blue mushrooms because I realised that these existed the other day and I've been wanting to paint them ever since. So I think I'm going to combine rust coloured mushrooms with blue mushrooms and I'm really enjoying that colour combination at the moment, the kind of warm and cool colours together. So I think that's what I'm going to do. But often when you want to paint something, it's a good idea to just 
get yourself into an art frame of mind. So that's where sketchbooks come in and where just doing something that's quite simple, not too taxing, it just kind of gets you, I don't know, in the right frame of mind to actually make a slightly more complex piece perhaps. I'm using coloured pencil and then applying Neo Colour over the top as well. Neo Colours are, for those of you who don't know, a wax pastel and they're really great for going over anything else. So say you've done something that you think is looking a little bit too strong or you just don't like it, you can get a Neo Colour crayon and they can go over the top of pretty much anything. I've noticed that I can actually use a very sharp, dark pencil over the top of the Neo Colour, but pretty much once you put the Neo Colour on, not much is going to go over that. <laughs> but it's great for actually covering up any mistakes or adding highlights or just toning things down a bit. I think if I just had to choose one Neo Colour that I would advise everyone gets, it would be the white one. Because as I say, it's great for highlights and you can see how I'm using that here just to lighten these little mushrooms a bit. And, um, and yeah, if you make a mistake, you can kind of blend it in a little bit as well. They're just really useful to have when you're working in mixed media. I have a few colours actually now and I really enjoy using them. I'm kind of trying to use them a bit more than I was previously because I went through a phase where I fell out of love with them a bit but I think it was because I had the wrong colours for me. So now I'm very sure of my colour palette which is a much more muted and natural palette. I made sure I got the colours that suited me and I find that I'm using them a bit more now. And I really enjoy them in mixed media work. So here you can see that I'm starting to add the details to the moss. And this is quite a lengthy process, <laughs> adding all of these little tendrils. Again, if you're looking at the image that I'm working from, you'll see that I've actually toned down the colours in my drawing compared to how they were on the photograph. I thought they were absolutely beautiful on the photo. The moss was a really zingy kind of bright fresh green and the mushrooms were much more of a brighter pink sort of a pinkish lilac color but um, I prefer working with a muted color palette so again I adapt to my style yeah it's about taking inspiration from anywhere but kind of making it your own and that comes just with practice really it took me several years to find my own style and now I know what um, colours I love working with and what suits my work and the atmosphere I want to create in pieces, the feeling I want to get across, I suppose you could say.
the sketchbook I'm using here is a small sketchbook from Pith Supply. They're a UK based sketchbook maker, <laughs> art supplies company. I don't know what else they do actually aside from sketchbooks, but I've had their larger sketchbooks before and I'd recently heard that they have changed the paper and I really loved the other sketchbooks for many reasons. But I found that when you added a lot of water, so for example, if you're using washers of watercolour, the paper really didn't like it. It would peel really quite badly sometimes. And so when I heard that they'd changed the paper, I was curious to try them. So I just ordered a couple of their smaller versions and I haven't so far tried watercolour in it, but I have used it for neo colour and acrylic gouache and it handled that really well and obviously on this page I'm using pen which is kind of like a watercolour pen and coloured pencil and neo colour and yeah it seems to be handling all of these different media just fine so I'm curious to try and see what it's like with the watercolour I'll have to report back on that but I'm hoping that it will handle watercolour better than the old paper did because I love these sketchbooks for the fact that they have this very natural ivory coloured paper. It's a very thick paper, really nice to work on. And I also love the best thing of all about them is that they lay flat. Now, there are very few sketchbooks that lay truly flat, but these ones do. I'll try to remember to put a link to Pith Supply in the description underneath the video as well. Um, this is not sponsored, by the way. I just love these sketchbooks. But um, yeah, they're a good one to try if you really like a book that lies flat and you like to work in mixed media. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me while I worked in my sketchbook. Please let me know if you like this style of video and I'll make sure that I post more of these on my YouTube channel. Also, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it because it really helps out my channel and it helps this video to be seen by more people. Let me know what you were working on if you've been working in your sketchbook too. And thanks again. I'll see you soon in the next video.